Kind Earth Tech. A taste of the future. I can't wait for you to hear what he has to say about the future of taste, how we go about it, what we actually make, and that we really have to make tasty foods if you want to change people's minds. Please, uh, can I have Miguel Serrano on stage? Uh, and thank you, Miguel, for being so patient with us. Thank you very much to the organizers because it's a tremendous job behind the scene to, to keep this going. I'm really excited to be here. Thank you very much for being here. So it's about converting taste into text. It's about once we have all these tremendous um, activities that we all have done, um, how do we get it across? Because how do we put the consumer at the center and at the heart of everything we're doing? Um, and how this text is generating then the desire and the trust in our products going forward. We're in a very novel category and we really need to step up here uh, together in a, in, a, in a big way. Um, my name is Miguel Serrano. I used to be the ex-head of uh, Plant Base for Nestle in, in Europe and uh, Northern Africa, Middle East. Um, and I am really delighted to go deeper and to share uh, a few of my observations and, and my, um, the way we go after uh, taste in, in, in the world. Now, let me share quickly a, a stat about the reason of the food choices in the US. Taste, not surprisingly, almost 60% of the non-regular consumers are saying that taste is the number one reason uh, before cost and health. So that is nothing really spectacular. But if you go back to this target group of the vegans and the vegetarian among us, it's only the third, the third um, driver um, behind personal health and animal welfare. What does that say? It says that basically it's really important that we really think already in the development of our products, of the technologies, to which segment are we targeting our offer? Who is our target consumer? It's a very important um, question. And you will see if I look at the landscape, let's have a look from the, the total consumer landscape, how we roughly look at it and, and divide. It. So you see there is about 5 to 10% of vegan, vegetarian. In some markets, it's up to 15%. It's a bit, but on average, I mean, the, the rest around 10%. On the other side, on the red side, we see 10% of real carnivores, hardcore carnivores. We see then meat lovers, people that really, really love meat. And that's very, very difficult. Um, and I'll come back to that afterwards. What is the taste expectation and what is the strategies? But there is 60% of all of them that is the so-called flexitarian, which is all thrown in one basket. While we cannot do that, we need to go deeper and understand the segments of these flexitarians where we want to address. Why do I say that? Because you see, from the vegan where they could make up to 100% compromise on taste. It's, it's changing. They, they are not as, um, they, they are much more um, uh, taste oriented than they used to be. But, but basically they believe in a, in a big idea, in a purpose. And, and this is something much more, much bigger than the taste. Go back to the meat lovers and carnivores, which is totally the opposite. And they, they, they are ready uh, to make compromise on anything but taste. Interestingly, um, and the mm, flexitarians, and that you see clearly, mm, some uh, which are closer to the vegetarian and vegan make a bit more compromise than some that are much more mm, very much into meat. So, so it, it depends. So what kind of strategies can we apply there? Basically, mm, our point of view before is the strategy is, uh, unless I have a very specific, very vegan mm, position or very carnivore position, which is not in plant-based, I would think that those territories are very, very hard to work on. Um, then we go to the meat lovers. And the meat lovers, they have an extreme, extreme, extreme high benchmark on the taste of meat, the texture, the smell, and the feel, and the experience. So therefore, it's very, very hard to convince. And today, to be honest, it's very hard. To, if I look at the plant-based products that are in the market, um, it's, 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 we are not yet completely there. So that group of people we take as a benchmark because that is if we make cheese-like products in dairy or milk or creams or if we make seafood or whatever kind of uh, analogs we make 
those lovers, the hardcore is our benchmark to develop the taste that we expect. This is for new product development, particularly in the meat analogs, talking related to meat. The other part, if we go to the other extreme in the vegetarian era, they are driven often and very strongly by health. So we can learn a lot from the health expectations they have. And, and you know, it's like, it's like a little bit of a balance, health or taste. At one point of time, we will have both, but I believe that we still have to really make a choice on, on what it is and why is it. I mean, because if you go to the to the line down, the further more you go to the meat lovers and carnivores, they are prepared to make more compromise on health than the others. And it's like a good marriage, isn't it? It's like, where do we compromise? We cannot have both at the same time. So we know that we have to give in here, take in there, and so balance it out. Because if we go back, what is absolutely um, in, in impossible is that we will need to make some compromise, no compromise on taste. And we need to deliver on superior taste on all the five senses. We need to have a real emotional experience around that. We really need to be surprising. We need to be sensational taste. And, you know, 80% of the people uh, coming new to the category of plant-based in the UK, the biggest market in Europe, they are going away. They don't come back because the experience and the taste mainly is not yet there. But taste, I mean, we are in food. So whoever is out there, everyone is screaming the same thing. Tasty, yummy, delicious, whatever. So yeah, the game is about building the trust. And, and how are we going to build that trust? Um, the, 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 the consumers are bombarded with labels, with claims, with, with from the big companies that can afford to communicate. Everyone is telling how wonderful, seeing happy people. Fact is, I go to the shelf and I got buy, I buy something that is not there. So are we really honest? Is the food industry, has it been honest? Does the consumer trust us? Honestly speaking, we have also a little bit to look into the own mirror because we as an industry, as a food industry, we have been telling the stories that we wanted to get across. It's like making a photo of a wonderful, pristine beach, but then just taking out only this little part outside the garbage where it's a mess and where the poor people live. So omitting things doesn't necessarily deliver on trust and and we need to we need to really step up there and the question we we ask and everyone needs to ask yourself do you really love do you really really love your product in in the big companies the big people up there don't even know their products enough so and when i say really love are you comparing really the right things i mean we had this kind of um, benchmarking uh, in a big company um, and and we, we were looking for taste preference. 60% of the consumer in the blind test needed to be in favor and prefer our product. Now, the question is, who do you compare to? Do you compare to another average product in plant-based? Oh yeah, it's plant-based with plant-based. No, I think that is where it comes to my previous chart where I said, Let's compare to the meat lovers. Let's compare to the segment that have the highest benchmarks because we do it in order to really improve on, on our deliveries more and more. So create a real taste that you love. M make it for yourself. Really love the taste. I mean, I've seen um, a lot of speakers before. They're very convinced. M make that taste that you love as a food lover. Put yourself in the shoes of this food lover, of this meat lover, of this dairy lover, of the seafood aficionado, and really judge from there. And not, well, it's not bad for being a veggie burger, right? Because that you have lost. Then you will you will go to back to the 10%. That is okay because the products are mostly okay, but they are not fabulous. And I think we need to start making fabulous product and talking about that. So how do we describe the taste? There's so many wonderful descriptors. So not only tasty and yummy, like superficial, but go deeper. Tell about the spicy, this nutty flavor. Tell about this umami. Tell about this round taste that fills your total palate. Talk about texture. 
texture. I mean, all the five senses, but texture are often a bit underrated. But we figured out that the juiciness of the hamburger is one of the critical aspects. The juiciness, this this aspect that it's really mm, 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 crusty outside maybe, and maybe mm, moist inside and tender and juiciness, that creates the desire. But also let's look at the chefs. We talked about restaurants. Those are the pacemakers and the cooking method is super important. Um, we figured out that the stirring part, the sizzling part in the pan, the sound was one of the critical points when we went out. So describe it, describe it yourself, describe it um, uh, like like the, in the, in the, in the wine connoisseurs describe the bouquet, describe everything and also the, the way it's done. And if you have something that is maybe not so positive, maybe tell it in a positive way. I mean, it's burnt. Okay, no one would say it's burnt, but you have very nice ways to say velvety for greasy or hearty for tough or, or tender for mushy. So there's a way of romantizing the product. It is very important that we give this emotion to the product, to the text, so that we create this desire that we're looking at. Then the pictures, the, the eye, the eye eats, and this is uh, make it wonderful, and create desire through the visual appearance, what you see on the plate. The plating is important. The pictures on, on everywhere you have, create these pictures that can be abstract, that can be very dishes, that you're really yummy, that you, you really see the pieces of, of the vegetables in, that people recognize the, the ingredients that they are there. And it's like a it's like a date at the end of the day. You you need to feel it. You need to close your eyes and you you need to mm, work with your senses and describe around it. Describe the atmosphere, the breeze around it, the moon, the nature, the feeling. Because the food can be brilliant, but it is more than food. It is the vibe. It is the vibe that you need to create. Um, and is at the end of the day uh, what we want to create for the entire industry to to really flourish and, and get where it becomes. Um, we are on a very nice journey. So I'm really happy to, to share my thoughts with you. Contact me anytime um, and thank you for this stage.